This is the world's first combustion engine powered car. Today in 2022, it's not easy to get it started. Now, imagine you're back in the late 1800s when it was created. Putting it in motion was just the first challenge. Back then, the streets were pretty nasty. And most of them weren't even cobblestone, they were just dirt and sand. And the second thing is, we Germans, we tend to be a bit skeptical when it comes to new stuff. Oh my God, what's that? Some were really afraid, some called it the devil's machine, witchcraft. So this woman decided to prove that the horseless carriage was safe. She was the first woman ever to ride this on a long distance trip. That was something totally new, never seen before. She was a curiosity with this thing and they didn't expect a woman to be a pioneer like that. Bertha Ringer's wealthy family were not very pleased when she decided to marry Carl Benz in 1872. At that point he was an unsuccessful, poor inventor. But Bertha had faith in him. So much so that she even put down her dowry towards his work. She was kind of an investor. She was owning the company, we would say today. She's not just a faithful housewife that sat in the kitchen while he was in the workshop. She was together with him in the workshop. She got her hands dirty. Es gibt eine Geschichte, dass er mit den Zündspulen nicht richtig fertig wurde. Und da hat sie sogar ihre Nähmaschine geholt. Und mit dieser Nähmaschine wurden die Zündspulen äh, gewickelt. Das wird ja immer wieder gesagt, hinter einem großen Mann muss eine starke Frau stehen. Sie stand nicht hinter ihm, sie stand eigentlich neben ihm. And this is why we say not Carl Benz invented the automobile, but we always say the team, Carl and Bertha Benz. In 1886, Carl Benz patented the first vehicle powered by a gas engine. A kid wouldn't recognize this as a car, it's just got three wheels. Benz decided on purpose to use three wheels because it was easier to steer. As you can see, I can move it really easily. Carl Benz had a permit to drive around Mannheim, where they lived. But Bertha wanted to push it further. One morning in August 1888, she decided to take this vehicle on a test drive that took her around 100 kilometers to Pforzheim. She took her two sons, Eugen and Richard. They were 15 and 13 years of age. Carl, around seven probably, awoke and he found a note on the kitchen table. I'm gone with the kids to my parents. And first he thinks, oh, she's going to take the train. And then he notices, oh my God, the patent car is missing. 100 kilometers seems easy today. But when you don't have proper roads or navigation systems and can only go at 16 kilometers an hour, it was a true adventure. Sie ist entlang an Bachläufen und an Bahnlinien gefahren, um sich überhaupt zu orientieren. Sie musste wirklich an jeder Kreuzung überlegen, fahre ich rechts, fahre ich links, fahre ich geradeaus. The second problem was, if you drive the very first car in the world, it's really difficult to get gasoline or ligurine, as they called it back then. Welcome to the first gas station here in Wiesloch. This was the gas station. A pharmacy? There's an original room which was visited by Bertha Benz in 1888, where she bought ligurine at those times. A pharmacist shop didn't need so much of the, uh, gasoline. It was needed as a solvent for materials, uh, but in, in lower quantities. That meant Bertha had to make several stops at other pharmacies along the way. She also had to use her hairpin to unclog the carburetor and her garter to fix some electrical issues. And she even turned to a shoemaker to replace the worn out leather straps of the brakes. Alleine auf dieser Fahrt hat sie unendlich bewiesen, wie viel technisches Verständnis sie hatte. From here, from Wiesloch, Bertha Benz drove south in the direction of Karlsruhe. And then she turned left into the mountains. The engine it has got 0.75 horsepower, that's basically a pony power, and the vehicle doesn't go uphill. So this is probably the reason why she took her two sons with her, because while she was steering, they had to push. When Bertha came back, she said, Carl, we need one more gear, a gear to go up the mountains. And she was very proud of this, because she found out another gear. Bertha's successful journey did more than improve the car. 
It also gave Carl Benz the confidence to show his invention at the World's Fair in Paris in 1889. Nach dieser Fahrt wurden tatsächlich dann Autos verkauft. Von dieser Fahrt sicher eine ganze Menge geholfen hat, dem Automobil zum Durchbruch zu verhelfen. When Carl had this patented, he probably could have never imagined how his invention would change all of our lives all over the world. It started off as this really simple looking three-wheeler and ended in luxury vehicles with V8, V12 engines, so powerful. And today, we can use our modern cars to follow in Bertha's tracks. Her pioneering journey has been turned into a scenic memorial route through southwest Germany. And with luck, you might end up in Dr. Sucky's guestbook when you visit the pharmacy in Wislock. As our crew did. Bertha made the biggest difference. Without Bertha, Carl Benz, sorry Carl, he wouldn't have come that far.